Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. The Asset Store is full of awesome tools and assets to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video, let's check out some highlights for January 25. This one is a list of paid systems and tools. In the last video, I'll already cover the best free new assets, and in the next one, I'll be covering top visuals and effects. As always, there's links to the asset in the description, and as bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. By the way, the Asset Store has a really cool sale running right now. All of the award-winning assets from last year are currently discounted. These have a lot of really awesome stuff, and all of them come from last year, so chances are you don't yet own a bunch of these. For some nice tools, this Umber Soft Shadows is really cool. It allows you to have some really nice Soft Shadows as opposed to being really harsh. If you're looking for a way to retarget animations that is supposedly better than Unity Humanoid, then this one looks quite interesting. The Asset Inventory, this is one of the best sets that came out in the past few years. This one is really awesome, it's basically a giant library of all your assets, so you can import everything into one place and then easily search for anything within it. Importantly, this also works with external things, so if you have a ton of humble bundles like I do, you can import those over here and then also search through those. Then you can find exactly what you want and grab just that one asset instead of importing an entire project. I really love this one. If you want to do some fun IK with a bunch of legs, then the legs animator this one is super cool. Or if you want some cool procedural weapons, look at this one. Or for a bunch of visuals, Polyperfect has a bunch of bundles. They've got pretty much everything from vehicles, characters, props, environments, and really everything. If you want something a bit more cute, then K has a bunch of really nice characters. I really like the style, looks great for some kind of cute game. For some 2D, there's a pack with tons and tons of 2D assets. Or for 3D, you've got this giant monster collection by Infinity PBR. So yep, check out the entire Unity Award sale with the link in the description. Alright, so starting off with a really cool cable system physics asset. This is something that I always find looks really awesome. Personally, I would love to build a rope or cable system, something like this. I'd love to build that someday. This one looks really cool and also looks very physically accurate. If two objects are linked by a cable, they stay linked, so the cable does not shrink, does not grow. If one side gets pulled, then the other side moves accordingly. If the rope goes over an object, then it also bends accordingly. So the whole thing looks really cool, really physically accurate. I remember when The Last of Us Part 2 came out, and back then people were really impressed with those rope physics. So maybe you can add this asset to your own game and maybe get the same result. You could use it for a rope or an electrical cable, maybe something to make some sort of puzzle game. Then if you're making a car game, you obviously need some kind of car controller. So here's one. You could make your own from scratch, but it's actually quite difficult to make a proper car controller. There are so many edge cases. This one seems to be really feature rich. The car feels nice and solid. It looks like it has some great traction. It's got acceleration, braking, and also has some drifting abilities. It supports all sorts of vehicle types. So things from electric vehicles, some heavy duty ones, you've got sports cars and just normal road vehicles. Also includes an audio mixing system so you can play all kinds of sounds. There's health for the wheels and brakes. You've got multiple cameras, joystick and mobile support, and tons more. There is a free version and a paid version of this asset. From what I can tell, the only difference is the free version is closed source, whereas the paid version has the source available. So technically, if you don't even need any modifications, then you can just use the awesome free version. Next, if you're making a pixel art game, here's a tool that looks really awesome. Basically, it allows you to recolor various parts of your sprites. That way, you can get tons and tons of variations. You can draw just one enemy and make dozens of enemies, all of them quite unique, very visually different. My only question is I don't really quite understand how it works. I'm guessing you create a mask to select what pixels make up each layer, and then you can easily recolor each of those masks so it will apply the color to those underlying pixels. I would guess it's like that, so there might be a little bit of a setup process involved, but then after you do that, then you can modify it in tons of awesome ways. As an indie dev, you really do need to be insanely efficient, and a tool like this for helping you reuse sprites without looking copy pasting this is really awesome, will definitely help you look quite a bit more efficient. Then if you're making an action-adventure game, here is a cool rope swinging system. You can define various hook points where the rope can hook onto, then you can throw the hook and the rope basically starts dangling down, the player can jump on it and swing alongside with some realistic physics. So the whole thing looks really nice, it doesn't actually look janky at all. The player can stay on the rope and can climb up or down. This would definitely be a nice mechanic in any sort of action-adventure game, some like Uncharted or Assassin's Creed. Just play some ropes in your levels, and then use them either for normal traversal or maybe some nice world puzzles. If instead you want to make some buildings, look at this cozy builder system. This one is heavily inspired by the game Tiny Glade. That's a game that went crazy viral, mainly because of just how good the building system looks. Here you can define the look of your walls, then you draw all the points, so top, bottom, side to side. Draw all those points, connect them, and it will automatically generate the mesh, generate the wall alongside those points. So it allows you to make some really dynamic, very curved buildings. 
You can use it for building levels during edit time, or you can also allow the player to build their own castles during runtime. The results look really nice. Obviously, it's going to depend on what assets you use, but visually it looks really great. So if you want to make a game kind of like Tiny Glade, then this would be a great starting point. Then here's a very simple but potentially very useful tool called Wingman. If you normally have tons of components attached to your objects, then you likely already know the pain of being quite hard to find a specific component in that giant list. Here this tool helps solve that problem by just setting some buttons for each component at the top. Then when you click on each button, you can view just that one component. It's a really nice idea. It's much better to see a bunch of buttons and click on them as opposed to sliding down an endless scroll wheel. It even has a search box if you prefer to search with text instead of separate buttons. So yep, like I said, very simple but looks quite interesting. Next, if you want to modify your objects inside Unity, look at this UV and texture editor. You can select your object and then very easily edit the UV. You can move, scale, or rotate each polygon. If you use lots of low poly meshes like I do, then I'm sure sometimes you've had the thought that you'd like to change just the color of just that one part, so this tool would help solve that. You can just select whatever polygons you want. Chances are the texture already has a bunch of solid colors, so then just move them and all of a sudden you've recolored that part. Low poly assets usually have those flat colors, so you can really just use any part of the UV. So yep, grab your sword, grab the polygons, drag them to another color, and all of a sudden you have a completely new sword. All of it really nice. This is yet another tool that helps you become quite a bit more efficient while reusing the same assets. Next, here's a really interesting one. It's a procedural book. Like the name implies, it actually procedurally generates a complete book, meaning it is not just the pages, it's the entire thing. So it has a cover, it has a binder, then it has all sorts of pages, and everything is customizable. So the size and the thickness of each part, you can add binder or no binder and so on. Then since the whole thing is dynamic, it also supports flipping pages back and forth. You can obviously place anything you want on each page. So this one could be either a fun menu, so maybe your main menu happens inside a book, or maybe this could be a fun spell book with each page showing commands for each spell. Maybe each page could be a tutorial for some mechanic in your game, or literally this could be great if you have books in your game, kind of like the Elder Scrolls games. Just find some way to write the text on each page and just add it as a little bit of world building. Then if you want to create some icons inside Unity, look at this one. It looks like a pretty complex program, but it's actually built directly inside Unity. So you can define multiple layers, you can attach an image to them, and then manipulate them in many ways. It has tons of procedural options for you to make all sorts of borders. You can easily change the shape, change the color, change anything. Then you can also add your own 3D objects in the middle and take a screenshot. So make a sword, then quickly get a portrait, drag your main character and get a little image you can use in the UI. So if you need to create lots of icons and you need to do them very quickly, then this looks quite useful. After that, if you need to manage your clipboard, look at this one. It's a clipboard utility that basically keeps track of everything you copy. It's not for text, but rather it's for components and other data types. So things like positions, colors, and more. You can store and favorite different things you've clipped before. You can paste them, you can paste multiple at once, and even transfer them between projects. So if this one could be quite useful if you do quite a lot of copy pasting. All right, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on Unity Asset Store for January 25. There's links on the description, and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. And also check out my own free and paid assets on the store. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.